The following is a presentation of Muddy River News. What kind of shows will you see on Muddy River Gems each month? The same award-winning storytelling from Mark McDonald and crew that you enjoyed for nearly 20 years on PBS. Muddy River Gems with host Mark McDonald. A new episode every month online from Muddy River News. Hey everybody, welcome to the Daily Muddy. Uh, joining me today is my friend, Mr. Jeff Dorsey. How are you, Jeff? I'm great, how are you doing? Fantastic, I feel uh, a little intimidated because if you know Jeff, you know that he's been a voice uh, for Quincy for a very, very long time, not just Quincy, but through Y101. Mm -hmm. What was before? WTAD before WTAD, that. yeah. WGM a little bit. Yeah. I bounced around a little. Yeah, so, but you have, you definitely have uh, all the experience in the world. And through this experience, you've probably met a ton of great people, um, not least of which the uh, late, great Mr. Mike Shannon. Yeah. Yeah. So he just passed away this weekend. Yes. And so we'll go ahead and say uh, rest in peace, Mike Shannon, uh, and to all of his family and friends. We are with you and um, thinking about you and praying for you. And um, but I, I hated Mike Shannon. You did. I was 11 years old. That's why I wore this today, because when I was 11, I wore my Yankee shirt. Oh, yeah? I, I grew up in New York, and I, I'm a big Yankee fan, as most people know. Still am, obviously. But uh, he had a home run and beat uh, the Yankees that year. Well, actually, tied 1964. He had a home run off of Whitey Ford. Yeah. It tied the game in the World Series Game 1, and uh, he went on to win. The Cardinals did not beat the Yankees in that game and, and in the series. And you've just never let, let I that go, huh? I him. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know him. I just beat my Yankees. That's yeah, all I know. Yeah. And little did I know I would later on in life grow up to be real good friends with him. That's so cool. Yeah, so nice. I, I didn't know Mike personally, um, but I know just from watching afar uh, how big of a presence he was, how big of a character he was, and uh, you know how much he impacted baseball and the St. Louis Cardinals uh, and everyone who listened and watched uh, baseball for – Gosh, the last what? For when did he start? 60s? 50 years in the broadcast booth. Yep. He played for nine years in, on the, in the major league level. Yep. So, I mean, he, he grew up in St. Louis, went to CBC High School. Yeah. And was the uh, player of the year in baseball and, and also in football. Yeah. Went it's to Mizzou. Everybody said he was going to be the uh, the next Heisman Trophy winner. He was coach. He even said he could have been if he stayed with it. Yeah. Cardinals offered him, I think it was... I don't know, fifty thousand dollars. I think it was. Yeah, and which he's was like huge. Then yeah, of course. Yeah, and he's like heck yeah. Play pro ball, so he left college and went to play pro ball. It worked out fine. For yeah, him. and the rest was history. Yeah, for sure. So uh, of course, I've you know heard him announce Cardinals game. I never did get the pleasure of watching him play, but I know that he took the Cardinals to the World Series three times, one twice. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, so when you when you know someone, uh, you know, kind of as big as as big as he is, not not just in stature but in personality, I'm sure that you have some amazing stories. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, understatement of the of the century, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, you know, once we became good friends, it was you know, it was you know, he would come up here to visit because uh, his wife Lori ran a travel yes. business, uh -huh. and she'd be involved with bridal expos or something mm -hmm. going on up here. And Mike was bored to death in the hotel room, so he said, hey, what do you do? And I said, okay, we'll go. I know where you wanted to go. We wanted to go over to the casino. The yeah, boat. for sure. And we'd go over there, and of course, he'd spend way more money than I would. <laughs> but Yeah. Uh, and we'd had some fun over there. And I, the, the best casino story I can tell you, I would play roulette, and Mike would always play blackjack, and he'd get bored over there, and he'd sit down next to me and play roulette. And there were three guys with Cardinal shirts on over across the way at the uh, craps table, and they spotted him. So they came over 10 minutes, took them 10 minutes, but they all kind of wandered over. And then I said something to the dealer about, are you ever going to hit number 20, which was the number I played all the time. Sure. It wasn't hitting at all that day. And the, the, the dealer said, I'm trying, man, I'm trying. And the guy said, excuse me, one of the three guys, said, excuse me, uh, are you Jeff Dorsey? And I said, yeah. And then he hits his buddies. I told you that was Jeff Dorsey playing on me. No. Mike Shannon sitting right here. No. These three guys have Cardinal shirts and hats on. And they had no idea. Never recognized him. 
until he hit me on the arm and said, about time he took some of this heat, big boy, and then he heard his voice. I was going to say. And it was like, I didn't even Dead exist. giveaway. I bet. I didn't exist. But how cool that they oh, recognize. That is just so neat. Yeah. It. He, t- he so would cool. tell that story every time he'd introduce oh, me to town imagine, in yeah. St. Louis when I'd go down there. And he would just say, this guy, everybody knows me. Well, not everybody knows me. Okay. Yeah. They all know you, Mike. Right. Yeah. Just didn't recognize. But you know what? Let's say it. In Quincy, you're kind of a big deal. And even in LaGrange, it turns out you're a big deal, too. So, <laughs> yeah, know. that's awesome. No, that's so cool. No, that, you know, that I could tell that story. It was one time that 20 wasn't hitting at all. And I, Mother Nature called and I left to go take care of what I had to take care of. And Mike was just sitting there and he decided to put a bunch of money on 20. I come back and what hit? No. 20. Get out. And he just had this big. Oh, Shire cat grin on I his bet. face and, and smiled at me. I said, you didn't. He goes, yep. That's awesome. He won a ton of money. I that is awesome. I don't even know how much he won. That that is, uh, did he give you any? Uh, no. Damn. No. Wow. No, he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know, Mike, but I do know. I know Lori pretty well just from, uh, you know, of course, growing up in Quincy and uh, travel traveling with her. My mom actually went on the Rhine River cruise with her and uh, Mike and had a really really great time of course she corroborates the story of you know he's just larger than life and personality you and, know yeah y- if if you've never met the man or if he came in here right now and you you had never met him yeah you would be best friends with him and i'm sure i'd love him yeah yeah, yeah, just yeah that kind of way he didn't, yeah. it didn't matter to him whether you were you know up here in stats status and stature or down here right he was going to make sure that you had a good time when you're around him yeah and that's exactly what he did with me yeah i didn't belong in that league well, I mean, but I think as far as presence and you, yeah, you, yeah, you're, yeah, you're big and you're bigger than life too, Mr. Jeff Dorsey. You say that. I, I say I that. I don't consider well, that. But well. we had some fun times though. In spring training, um, we went after the ball game. He says, come on, we're going to go out to eat some restaurant. And I went over there and joined Lori and him and a couple other friends over there. And then Mike would order a drink with uh, sliced orange in it. Okay. I forget what the drink was. And he had one or two or three or four of those. And then, and I had a few of my own drinks at the same time. And everybody was having a good old time. And um, he, I said to him, the waiter comes by and said, would you like that slice of orange in this drink too? He goes, yes. And I said, Mike, why don't you just get the whole orange? So Mike gets up and he walks back and he grabs an orange from the guy back in the back of the yeah. restaurant. And he comes back and he throws it at me like a baseball. Well, I catch it. <laughs> and the two of us start playing catch, no. catch in the restaurant <laughs> with this orange. And Lori's like mortified. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. No, sit down, you know. So then he sits there and uh, he says, well, I'll have another drink. And she says, no, you're not. And then, yes, I am. No, I'm not. And they're like arguing back and forth. Yeah. Bit. And then she turns to me and says, Dorsey, make sure you tell him no. Tell him no. I like right. Nice, like you nice. were going <laughs> to. Mike, let's have another drink. Yeah. And, right. And then Lori didn't talk to me the rest of the trip. <laughs> uh, I'm sure she forgave you eventually, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's good. We, we had some great times, his birthday parties. That I got invited to, of his. Some of the people that would show up, I was like, pinch me. I do not belong. Really? To like who? Well, it was his 70th birthday party. It also happened to be All-Star Weekend in St. Louis for a bit, what year that had been. 2009, I think that was. Mm-hmm. And we were at the uh, Four Seasons Hotel on the rooftop yeah where they have two pools up I've there, been there yeah. there's a big it's, party area it's up outstanding. there and in comes a baseball commissioner bob costas comes walking in lou brock all the cardinal greats and, and baseball greats for that matter yeah. are walking in joe torrey showing up all these you know huge names in, in sports and i just stood there up against the wall and just watched this You're like yeah am you know? I, am and I that I was dreaming? really when I, I just had met mike maybe a year earlier so that was like wow that's insane. So, you know, all these people that I grew up watching play or are currently playing. For yeah. That matter, now they're right in front of you. They're right there. And I go, this is really cool. And, and he has these these kind of friends. Yeah. And that he's incorporated me into that. That's so cool. You know, so I, I'm eternal, just eternally grateful to him that, that, that he made a friendship with me. Sure. And, uh, and had a wonderful time with the guy. You know, we talk baseball all the time. Yeah. I would propose some play or something. What would be the ruling on this play? And he, I don't know. So he'd pick up the phone and he'd call Joe West. Had him in his phone. Joe West is an umpire. Okay, I was like, I don't know who that is, yeah, but I'm just pretending long, like I do. Yeah, yeah. Time, I'm sure he's a big deal, yeah. Long time umpire, <laughs> just retired, by the way. But he would call Joe West and he'd say, hey, Joe, with the guys on third base, and this, what's the call on that? You know, and that just like, yeah. to me, I'm sitting here, wow. It's just unreal. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It was like, pinch me. I, yeah. I, I can't believe this is happening. So, Very But cool. he was a super guy. Yeah. I mean, 
a birthday he, like years ago. He uh, says, by the way, what are you doing Friday? And I said, I don't know. He goes, well, you're doing something Friday. What are we doing? He says, I, I rented a limo. And here comes his limo in my neighborhood. My neighbors are all wondering what's going oh, on. Oh, yeah. They had all kinds of stories after that oh, one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And picks me up, and we went out having a party f- for my birthday. Just stuff like that. But he didn't have to do that kind right. of stuff. I mean, he has a million friends. Yeah. But that's None like Jeff Dorsey. No. There's only one. There's no, only one. No, there's yeah. only one me, yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of other people <laughs> well, with me out there yeah, for friends. No. But, no. Very uh, cool. But a super guy. Yeah. You know, and he loved uh, playing golf. He loved playing the horses going to Fairmont Park yeah. all the time. Um, you know, a tough year for Mike the last couple of years. He's lost a lot of good close ball players, friends that of his that played on those teams. Tim McCarver, for one of them, passed away, you know, and uh, he was real close to Tim. And real close to Jay Randolph, a broadcaster. And, okay. and Jay's like, I think Jay's probably around 88 or 89 years old. And that's got to be tough on him right now, too, yeah. I think. Yeah, oh, I bet. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, tough on a lot of people who, you know, may not have been as close as you, but uh, he's definitely impacted, I mean, so many viewers, so many listeners uh, and lovers of baseball. And um, it's yeah. always, it's unfortunate to lose a legacy, but... And philanthropic, too. I yeah. Mean, things okay. you never heard about. Sure. You know, you hear, hear something, somebody needed something, he'd help out and make sure it happened. Yeah. Or if he couldn't do it, he knew the people who would. Sure. You know, and, and that's the kind of thing that a lot of ball players and professional sports people do quite often. They don't get they don't get the recognition. Right yeah. You know, and there's a lot of that going on. Right. And thank God it happens because sure. they 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 recognize their roots too. You know, they've been fortunate to make the kind of money they make, and they can they can afford to do that kind of stuff. Give back a little, so, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what it's all about. It is, so, yeah. But uh, I'm going to miss them. I know yeah. that. I'm going to miss just picking up the phone and having. St- you know, talking baseball with him and stuff like that. Yeah, I but, bet. But uh, I'm, like I said, very grateful I had the opportunity to, to run into him, especially for when I'm 11 years old and I hated him. Yeah. Turn Quick, around, fair play. Isn't that, you know, <laughs> the world is a is a crazy place sometimes, but. Yeah, I wrote a little thing on Facebook about how it's funny how God puts people in your life. That's right. You know? That's right. And yeah. He put, uh, actually put Lori in my life as a, as a business person, mm-hmm. worked together radio and she was doing her business. Mm-hmm. And then getting to meet, I don't know how she met Mike. I still don't know how she met Mike. Yeah. Honest with you. I bet but it's a wild story, too. I bet it is, too. I bet she's got some crazy stories. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the fact that, you know, that I got to meet him through her and yeah. knowing when I was 11, I hated him for beating my Yankees. He probably understood that, though, right? Oh, I would yeah. tell him it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm wearing is because, like I said, I wore, I wore my Yankee shirt when they, they played yeah. all the time. But um, every time I, t- not every time, but quite often I tell him, you know, I hate, still hate you from beating my Yankees in 64. And he goes, get over it, big boy. <laughs> yeah. Get over it. I bet. Yeah. yeah. And it, and he even invite me up in the press box to watch some I was going to ask if you got, yeah, that's, that is a, a that's a cool place. experience. It's a great place. Yeah. There. Anybody ever gets that opportunity, don't turn don't, it down. Yeah. That is so it's cool. It's the best place to watch a ball game. And, Very cool. and And through that, I met an awful lot of people too. I mean, yeah. Not only with the Cardinals, but the visiting teams that showed up. And I'm blessed. Yeah. That's all I can say. And I'm blessed. And I'm blessed thanks to Lori and him for a lot of things that have gone, uh, gone well over my life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I got to take my, my daughter and her husband up there to the booth, and they were just like wide eyed. Flabbergasted. Yeah. yeah I bet. Yeah. I bet. It's, it's a good time. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for the loss to um, everyone, you know, um, not even just baseball lovers. He even, you know, impacted my life through things and through my mom. And um, like I said, he just, he had He'd a huge this presence. Town. And, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't think he realized what kind of town it was, and, you know, until he met Lori and she was having her operation where business were up here. And right. She's gotten down here and down in St. Louis still. And, uh when he would come up here and the people, he used to, God, these people are so nice up here. Yeah. You know, they're very friendly. They, and and they, they respected his privacy. privacy. Yeah. Especially when he was out eating. Yeah. It's one of the biggest bugaboos I think of most uh, celebrities have. Sure. When you're eating and people bother you and that kind of thing. And Yeah, just let me enjoy my meal. And, and yeah. he would say, you know, I couldn't get this in St. Louis. They'd come right up. And oh, I bet. He yeah. said, but people like, and they, he just, like I said, if you never met the man, you'd, you'd walk away thinking you knew him for 10 years. Yeah. Well, perfect guy to, to have friendship with. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, and yeah, boy, he was cool. fun. Yeah, he lived a good life. He lived. A, it sounds like he lived a, a complete and yeah, very eventful and uh, memorable life, and left an impact on everyone he came in contact with. And 
Um, you know, although the world is going to miss him, uh, there are memories to stay a lifetime. Some of the right? best things he ever did was his live at Shannon's radio broadcast. It would be right after the Cardinal games had ended. He'd walk over to the restaurant downtown. One of the yeah, what bars. restaurants did he own? I, he owned I, Sly, well, Shannon's. Okay. He has one Wasn't in it Edwards, two? Edwardsville, and, and you've got one in the airport. Okay. And uh, But he had the one downtown, which he does not have then. Right. That's shut down. But um, he would invite visiting team players and managers, and, uh, and he says, come on over to watch the show. Yeah. So I went over to watch the show after the game one Saturday night. These were Saturday night games. And I'm in his restaurant watching it. And he invites me to be on the program. And I'm going, whoa. Ah, were you wearing the shirt? No. Okay. <laughs> I wore my Yankee hat. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I always wore it when, when I was around just to get just, a little. Yeah, just a little dig. And, yeah. A reminder. But uh, those programs were a lot of fun because they were so candid. Yeah. And, you know, they would get so loose because they'd been drinking. All oh, the yeah. Guests. Having cocktails. All the guests and... were having cocktails. And sure. By, by the end of the show, you never know what was going to happen. All bets were off. Yeah, I bet. But yeah. the, he, he invites me on the show and I go, what am I going to talk about? We just talk baseball. Yeah. Which I love to do with anybody. Sure. You know, so, uh, yeah. you know, that that was one of his best things he did. And they've got the history of those programs. I'm sure they're put away for yeah for, for future use down the road. They use them right. on rain delays a lot. Oh, really? On the Cardinal broadcast. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. And he'll, he'll have people that even are, aren't even in the, the baseball business. Right. Uh, maybe entertainers that are, he had, you know, uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, one time. So, you know, very cool. It was a good, those are great programs. Yeah. Great guy. He, he, like I said, he loved Quincy. He'd go walking around stores and kill him time and people yeah. would see him. And they, and he never, ever turned down an autograph. Very cool. I never saw him say, I can't do that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And never charged for one, mm. which was rare in these days. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I again, I didn't know him personally, but I do know the uh, the mark he left on this world and in Quincy and in a lot of people's hearts, um, not just for baseball, but, you know, people yep. who knew and loved him. And I know he's going to be missed, um, but I will say we were blessed to have him and we're blessed to have a lot of his life uh, recorded and, you know, kind of so we can reference back and, and hear him and uh, be reminded of how awesome and, and, and some great calls, was. too. Yeah. Great yeah. play by play calls. Yeah. Very for cool. a guy they said would never be able to do it in broadcasting. Right. He did pretty 50 well. Years 50 later, years right? later, right? Yeah. And the broadcast booth's named Mike Shannon Broadcast Booth. Wow. Yeah. It's quite a legacy. It's pretty good. It's quite a legacy. Well, uh, again, I'm sorry for your loss, but um, what a great man. And he definitely left an indelible mark. And um, we will remember him as uh, larger than life. Yep. Yeah. Especially in St. Louis. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that's, I mean, we could sit here all day and tell stories and talk about how great he was. And, but we'll just, I think we'll just leave with, um, our thoughts and prayers are with everyone who, uh, was touched by Mr. Mike Shannon. And, um, we wish everyone comfort and the happiness of having him in your lives. And, uh, that pretty much yeah. does it, right? Thank you for having All me. All right. Here. Thank you for coming in. It's always great Glad to see you. All right. Uh, coming up next, I sit down and talk with Mr. Adam Broxick about fishing for freedom. A great night's sleep starts at Harvey's Furniture. Check out the large selection of complete bedroom sets. And when it comes to mattresses, we have a full selection from Vemco, Spring Air, and Chatham and Wells. Harvey's Furniture. Our home, your home. Instant Replay is your local sports bar. With 18 big screen TVs, we have all the sports packages from college games to pro games. We offer daily drink specials and come check out the bullpen, our newly renovated beer garden. Instant Replay, 2739 Chestnut in Quincy. Are you looking for the perfect venue for your next special event? Check out Utopia Event Center. Utopia has a large banquet room and an awesome bar area, perfect for anything from birthday parties to formal corporate meetings. It also offers a photo booth, stage for a DJ or a live band, and a fully stocked bar, all for only $300. Check us out at utopiaeventcenter.com or call Barn at 217-430-6559 for more information. Utopia Event Center, 900 North 12th Street in Quincy. Quincy Warehouse Bargains is your Quincy home improvement store. It's the only store of its kind in the Quincy area. We offer flooring, mattresses, area rugs, dining sets, couches, appliances, and much more. And have more products to come so we can better serve the Quincy and Tri-State community. Our staff is ready to help you find what you need to make your house a home. Quincy Warehouse Bargains, 
4100 North 24th Street, Quincy. Welcome to the Abbey, a Quincy tradition. With six big screens, a new larger kitchen, and now more seating capacity, the Abbey is the place to be before, during, and after the big game. Come enjoy fan favorite Abbey Tizers, steaks, burgers, and a variety of daily food and drink specials. Can't join us? Carry out is available too. Now with a convenient drive up window to better serve you. 1736 Spring in Quincy. Opens at 3 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Come join all your friends at the Abbey, a Quincy tradition. The Liquor Booth is your home for a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits. The Liquor Booth has two locations in Quincy, 3520 Broadway and 1500 North 12th Street. The Liquor Booth, where it's always happy hour. And welcome back. Joining me now is Adam Broxick. How are you? Doing good. How are you, Ashley? Good. Thank good. you. Thank you for joining us. Um, I think one, so this event that we're about to talk about, uh, talk about is one of my favorites uh, because it, it helps some very deserving people uh, and it builds some lasting memories, I'm sure. So what we're talking about is fishing for freedom and uh, you are the guy who wears all the hats as the media director, is that right? I wear a lot of the hats, okay. not all of them. But not all of them. Yep. So um, Fishing for Freedom is an organization that connects warriors, so veterans and current uh, active, duty, active duty, okay. And it connects these warriors with people uh, who, you know, have boats, like to fish, right? And right. they get, you guys, you get them all together and you send them out for a weekend of memory building and kind of a big thank you, Very right? Very big thank you, yes, yeah, that's that, correct. That is so cool, that is so cool. So this year, um, Fishing for Freedom is held when? First weekend of June every year. So okay. it's the first Sunday. So this year it's June 2nd through 4th. Okay. Next year, it's actually the end of May through June 1st is Sunday. Perfect. Uh, June 2nd, I think. It's okay. Right. So it's the first Sunday of June every year. Okay, every year. And how many, um, I guess, service folks have you had participate in past years? Do you know that number? Last year, we had a total of 325 warriors participated total throughout the weekend. Wow. From wow. all over the country. Okay. And you take them out and you, where do you take them on? The Mississippi? Where do you uh, take them? Mississippi, Mark Twain Lake re-regulation pool of Mark Twain Lake. And okay. we've got a private lake in Coatesburg that we take our, uh, um, I guess you could say less boat worthy gotcha. uh, warriors. Okay. Um, safer. Gotcha, safer. Um, so is there, is it like a competition or is it just solely to get them out and kind of give them, you know, some experience, some some memories? So it is a tournament. Okay. We say it's a friendly tournament. Gotcha. So there is, you know, there's weights involved, there's numbers involved and stuff like that, but it's a friendly tournament. Uh, there's no money involved. There's no- okay winnings besides trophies. So it's it's a friendly, fun tournament to give back. It's to not give a back, yeah. $10,000 everybody's sure. fighting and stuff like that. Right, 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 it's right. right. Like it's, stuff it's, in those, it's giving back. Stuff in those fake weights in the fish like yeah, that right. the, the one, the one uh, competitor said. Anyway, sorry, I digress. But <laughs> okay, so Fishing for Freedom, of course, like we said, it is uh, solely uh, funded by donations of time, of uh, equipment, of money, and so I'm sure that you have events to help build up. And I think we've been to a few of these. Um, do you want to do you want to run us through kind of your upcoming events that you might have to help support this? So we have a lot of sponsorship from the Quincy area and other communities around the area and afar both. Okay. Um, the next event off the top of my head that I know of is actually the weekend of our event. Um, Southside Boat Club does a breakfast on Sunday morning okay. um, for our escorts. After that, again, I'm just going off the top of my head. Yeah, you're uh, good. You're Red good. Dog Saloon, September 23rd. That okay. is the biggest fundraiser every year. They've raised over $200,000 for us in six years. Yeah. So that is incredible. Yeah. Uh, they volunteer. They just they just They just it do it. They just do it. Yeah. yeah. And that place, if you've never been to Red Dog Saloon, it's in Meyer, and it is a very cool place. And, uh, of course, you'll want to go and support Fishing for Freedom, but also just go check out the hats they have on there. And I understand that it's under new ownership. Is yes, that right? Correct, yes. Okay. Um, so maybe you just go check it out and, and say hello to the new owners. But uh, for sure, um, donating time, money, resources, uh, boats, and because you have to have boats and fishermen, fisher people, whatever you prefer, um, to help uh, get these warriors out on the water and provide this experience. So what, if anything, are you in need of currently for this coming up, Fishing for Freedom? So we are still looking for about 50 boats. 50 uh, boats. We've got basically a month, today's May 1st. So okay. we're looking for 50 more, 50 more boats as soon as we can get them. Um, we, don't, we aren't looking for you know tournament anglers, professionals that have, you know, 
Ad- uh, Adonish or a, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Awarded. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. We okay. don't want uh, the. Prof- I mean, we don't need the professionals. Anybody that has a boat can be a boater. Okay. Um, you've just got to meet meet our boat requirements, which is very minimal. Um, you have to uh, provide the equipment to take people fishing. Okay. And have just a very small general knowledge of fishing. It's it's not a it's not a big tournament. Like I said, it's yeah. just for fun. It's providing experience it's and providing. giving back. Yeah, for sure. So if I have a boat, but I'm not available on that day, is there anything that I can offer? Aside from that, okay. So our volunteer registration just opened on our website. Um, okay. We need volunteers Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, okay. Mainly Saturday and Sunday. Um, sign up on the website. You can help us at the veterans' home. Um, help us hand out food on Saturday night. Um, take care of auction items. Uh, Saturday we or Sunday we need help at the riverfront doing okay. you know traffic directing or clean up or you know just anything. Just helping, yeah. Just general. helping out. What time does it start? What time does the event start? So Friday night is our meet and greet at the Eagles Club. Uh, it's usually around four or five o'clock it starts. Um, that's just kind of a private event where we have everybody get together and have fun. Um, Saturday, the Vets Home, I believe is at 11 o'clock. Um, it's all on the website, I'll have to look. Okay. I believe it's at 11 o'clock and then Saturday night banquets, four, four or 4.30 the doors open. And then Sunday they fish from six to noon basically. Okay. Um, at all three locations, or all four or five locations. Okay. And then, uh, so, here at the Quincy Riverfront, most of the activities start around 11 o'clock, I would say. Perfect, perfect. So and you mentioned about four. Okay. And you mentioned website. Um, do you, can you shout out what that website is so people can go for more information? It is fishingforfreedomquincy.org is our um, website. And then you can find us on Facebook too, Fishing Facebook. for Freedom Quincy. Perfect. Um, now, how did you get involved? <laughs> um, I've been involved for probably eight of our 12 years. Okay. Um, I was still in high school, so my brother and my dad have done it forever. Um, I just showed up on Sunday and did, you know, odds and ends here and there, yeah. helped out when I could. And then 2018, we did a fundraiser ourselves. Um, we did a catfish tournament two years in a row, 18 and 19. I think we raised about 5,000 roughly uh, between those two years for you know, for the tournament right. um, as, a, as a fundraiser. And yeah. then we said, let's just get involved and yeah. let's jump on the board and jumped in with I was in charge of escorts first and now I'm in charge of the media stuff so okay. website everything falls How up. many people are on your team? A lot. Yeah. Um, I would say at our meetings probably 15 to 20 people. Okay. I would say show show up That's to do awesome. pretty much everything. That's so cool. Yeah. Um so do you have like any of the best stories or do you have like any favorite memory or because I think this is just such a it's a very cool event it's a very cool cause so So it, it's a great event. I've got chills right now thinking yeah. about it. I do, yeah. every time we talk about this yeah. it's it's really good. Um the number one story that I think of every year. Um we've got a guy named Louis Demers okay. from Quincy. Mm-hmm. He is our oldest I believe ever participant. He's a warrior and I I think I did the math right. He is 99 years old and he's coming back this year. Wow. And he's fished with us, I don't know how many years, but a long time. That is so, so cool. He's actually got the, I believe the Guinness World Record for the oldest lifeguard too. Really? So yeah, Louie's coming back this year. That um, is so I haven't cool. heard from him lately, but his his daughter or whoever it is that signs him up usually sends us an email and says, hey, we're coming or that is hey, so we've cool. got something else going on now. So Louie's coming back, um, 99 years old, has fished with us for a long time and he loves it. So Very cool. That's, World War II veterans. So that's cool. That is so, so cool. And of course, we appreciate all, you know, all of these uh, men and women who have, of course, served our country and served our freedom. So uh, anything that you can give to give back is uh, absolutely appreciated. Um, as as he said, they're, they're still looking for boats um, and boat drivers, I assume, right? So uh, if you can support this cause, reach out uh, via their website. Shout that out one more time. Fishingforfreedomquincy.org. Dot org or you can find them on Facebook. Uh, Adam, thank you so much. I appreciate everything that you're doing. And uh, again, one more time on the dates. June 2nd through 4th. June Friday, 2nd. Saturday, Sunday. June 2nd through the 4th, Fishing for Freedom. Help out if you can, uh, or just go say thank you to these uh, to these veterans and these active service people. All right, that's it for today's Daily Muddy. We'll catch you back here tomorrow for more. Muddy River News, our home. Our news.